A Stuart 7A model steam plant. This is part 12. Assembling the valve gear and making it work. I need to make some pins to hold the assembly together. And here I'm removing the bolts that I use as a temporary measure. They were surprisingly tight in the holes. This is a 7BA bolt and it's taking some getting out. I think I'm going to open these holes up slightly with a small drill. The pins that hold the expansion link in position on the valve forks are too long. I'm going to have to shorten them. These nuts at the back are only lock nuts because the valve forks are threaded. This was a very simple job. First I removed one of the pins and introduced it to the one inch belt sander to grind a little bit off the other end and then refitted it. The front part of the valve forks are not threaded but the rear part is. And gun metal is a very soft metal so do not over tighten these pins as you certainly do not want to clamp the expansion link in position. Same with the lock nuts, you do not need to torque them up, these are very small components. And you do not need to put much pressure on them before they actually shear off. The best description is firm but delicate. Here you see the finished job, and none of the thread from the pins is sticking out. And now it's time to make the pins that hold the lifting links to the expansion link. And as you can clearly see here, I've inserted a couple of washers each side so that the lifting links clear the pins on the valve forks. Because the last thing I need is for the lifting links to collide with the fixings on the valve forks. After measuring the length, it's time to make the pins that go through the assembly. I cut the pins to length on my bandsaw, and the first thing to do is to machine the rough ends all square. I did this for both of the pins. And now it's time to thread the first one. This is tapping compound, or dyeing compound I suppose if you're using a die. I'm using a standard die holder fitted with a 7BA die on the adapter that I made to make it so I can use these in the tailstock. Please search my channel, you will find a video about me making this thing. In no time at all, here's the first thread. I just have to repeat this another three times. I've always had a slight problem with repetition, which is very strange as I'm a musician and practicing a musical instrument is all repetition. But if I make an 060 steam locomotive, there are six wheels to make, and I get fed up after a bit. I once did an ADHD test online. It was an official one, and it said if you get 11 or more, you need to go and see a doctor because you have adult ADHD. So I did just that, and after a while and a few questions, the doctor started to look a bit jaded and said, look, I'll just stop you there. The cure for your condition is about 50 years away. Here are some tranquilizers. now just go away. Later on in my life, I found out that it was a really weird food allergy that caused most of my problems. I wrote a bit of a paper about it, showed it to the doctor, and he said, yes, this is 100% correct. But as not everyone is affected by these foods, no one will take it seriously. And now it's back to the job, and the last part of it is to clean up the end of the thread and where the thread finishes, because usually at this point there is a slight burr. For this I'm using a needle file, but please note the way I'm using the needle file, I'm coming in from behind. There's definitely no need for a girlfriend joke on this one. Time to assemble the pins, and they're going together very well. This 7BA nut on the right hand side seemed to be quite a tight fit, which is not a bad thing for a pin that holds valve gear together. Please note I'm only using the pliers to gently hold the nut at the other end. The final tightening was done with a small spanner. At this point I'm temporarily fitting the reversing lever. The reversing lever shaft will need to be fitted permanently into the drop arm and locked in position. But before I do this I need to make the mechanism that supports the reversing lever and allows it to be locked in position. And only when this part is made can I get the angle that I need between the drop arm and the reversing lever. That's the way I do it anyway. If I was to fix the shaft in position at this stage, I would probably regret it. The main purpose of this episode is to show how I fit the valve gear together. And to find out whether the engine will run in forward and reverse. I'm going to attach my compressed air line to the engine. And I'm setting the position of the eccentric to the right place. That being, the highest point of the eccentric lobe needs to be at 90 degrees to the crankweb. This is the starting point. Time to turn on the compressed air. Once 
Well, that's quite encouraging. I'll put it down to beginner's luck. Even though the valve timing is somewhere near, it will not go in reverse. So what's going on here? Have I lost the plot? Have I got everything totally wrong on this engine? It looks to me like the expansion link is colliding with the drop arm when it's in reverse. I think I'll leave that for the moment and revisit it in the next episode. In this clip I've applied some Loctite 243 thread locker to the threads on the end of the pins. Now I'm re-tightening the nuts. This will stop them working loose, because nobody wants the nuts to drop off. The valve gear feels very good and it moves from side to side very smoothly. And the reversing gear is not finished or locked in position, but it runs quite well with the expansion link at this end. At the moment I'm turning the oil regulator on the displacement lubricator, which is doing nothing at all. I'm turning it just to illustrate the fact that if you have an engine fitted with a displacement lubricator, it will only work when the engine is running on steam. I'll stop talking for a minute, but I'll be back shortly. So what's going on with the expansion link? I had a look on the drawings, I can't show you those because they are copyright. The only difference between the valve gear fitted to this engine and the valve gear as shown on the drawing is the length of the expansion link. There's too much metal on the right hand side and if you look closely at it, it doesn't look right anyway. So in the next episode, I'll remove the expansion link and cut some off this, because it's no good at all in this state. That concludes this episode. All I'd like to say is stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.